What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing you combos that you need to know if you want to play Phantom Knight in today's format. Now I love this deck, I've been having so much fun with it and if you guys are looking for a combo deck, I think this is one that you should try out. It's obviously really meta, but it's also really really fun. If you enjoy these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. One last thing I want to say is that we're really close to 5,000. Like I mean super super close to 5,000. Let's see if we can make it happen before the end of the year. We thank you guys all for watching and with that, on to the video. Okay, so for our first combo over here, it's literally just a one card combo just with the tour guide. I'm gonna show you guys how tour guide alone puts up four disruptions. Alone! This is a one card four disruption combo. So let me show you guys how it works. First thing you're doing is you're gonna normal summon the tour guide, of course, and you're gonna activate the tour guide effect. We're gonna start off here by summoning our Graph, and here we're gonna go into Chirbini. Okay, now this is really important because Graph is gonna activate and Graph is gonna summon our Seer from our deck, okay? So this is pretty standard stuff, and at this point you've already gone through your BA engine. So because of that, now Chirbini is actually gonna need to get you into the PK engine, and you're actually gonna need some extenders, as you guys can see here. We have no other monsters in our hand, no other cards in our hand, so we need some extenders. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna send an Ancient Cloak just doesn't really matter which one is gaining the attack and then we're going to activate the ancient cloak effect to add ourselves a silent boots okay silent boots is a special summon for us doesn't need any other things in our hand as soon as we get to our bardish over here that's all we're going to need so we're going to go rusty bardish real quick and seer is going to activate now seer activating here is really important of course you're not going to be summoning the graph because graph is just going to die right so you're going to want to summon the cherubini again like that's the really cool thing about this combo right so here you guys can see we have the silent boots to summon but first what we're going to do is we're going to activate the bardish we're actually going to send a torn scales and then also to set our brigadine here okay so we send the torn scales we're going to set the brigadine and this is important because you need the extra monster okay so you need the extra monster here it doesn't really matter which one you activate first you can activate the trap first, you can activate the silent boots first, doesn't really matter. But you're gonna be summoning both of them essentially, okay? It doesn't really matter which one you summon first, which one you summon second, you're summoning both, right? And then you actually gonna use the both of them here to make your IP Mascarena. Now here you could make Verte, it doesn't really matter what order you do this in. Again, this is a part of the combo where the order doesn't matter so much. What matters is just that you get to this. So you're gonna go into IP first here. You could also technically go into Verte first here, it doesn't really matter. But then you're gonna use Silent Boots to search a Fog Blade, okay? Because Silent Boots was banished, you can use the Torn Scales effect to summon itself back. Now again, we're doing this all off of one card. Potentially, if you had other extenders in your hand, what you could do is you could activate the Torn Scales effect to pitch the Fog Blade and they go from there, depending on what you had in your hand, depending on where you could go. But again, this is just a one card combo. This is all you need. So then now you have the Cherubini, you have the Torn Scales, you can make your Verte Anaconda. Okay, Verite is gonna activate itself here, sending the Fusion Destiny, of course, and then we're gonna summon the DPE by sending the Celestial and the Dasher, okay? This is like literally just a one card combo. One card, four disruptions. So you guys might be thinking, okay, where's the four disruptions? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the fog blade and you're gonna pass your turn, okay? So you're gonna go into end phase. So it's gonna go into your opponent's main phase. Now again, this is just a test hand, so our opponent, of course, is not gonna be activating anything, so we can't really activate anything here. But let's say your opponent is in their main phase at this point. At this point, you have one Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, which is a pop, so that is one disruption. You have one Fog Blade, which is essentially a negate plus a battle protection, so that's two disruptions. Then, on your opponent's main phase, what you're most likely going to be doing is you're going to use the IP as well as the Verte Anaconda to be making your Apollo Yusa. And Apollo here is going to have two negates. So, we started off with two with the DPE and Fog Blade, and we have two negates on the Apollo four disruptions with just the tour guide. This is your end board right over here. And again, don't know what else you have in your hand. You open maybe another fog blade in your hand. Uh, you can just set another fog blade. You open an imperm, you open, you know, a chalice, droplet, whatever you can like have in your hand, you can just go from there and it's even more disruptions, right? But just one card, just a tour guide alone is four disruptions right over here. And the nice thing is it sets you up because the reason it sets you up is one, you have Celestial Dasher, of course, for the draw on your next turn. So you get to draw two. On your next turn, when it comes back to you, you have Rusty again to send another PK monster to add yourself a trap. And then you can just keep extending from there, right? From there, if you have a Fog Blade, for example, in your graveyard, then you can banish the Fog Blade, summon the PK monster from your graveyard, etc., etc. You guys know how it goes from there, right? So this is our first one card combo. So for the next combo here, it is a two card combo. Here we're doing Torn Scales as well as Cloak. 
potentially depending on what you have in your hand the thing is with this deck is because a lot of it is extenders and a lot of the pk monsters have different effects in the graveyard there's like actually a million ways to do these combos but they all kind of end up on the same similar board right because at the end of the day like let's say instead of a cloak here you had a gloves and you can send the gloves and you could send the fog blade with the gloves and then the, the fog blade could summon something back from the graveyard etc etc you guys see what i'm trying to say so it depends on what the what the hands are looking like but here we're just going to do a two card combo with torn scales and ancient cloak so what you're going to do is of course you're going to summon your torn scales and you're going to activate your torn scales effect pitching the cloak here to search yourself or to send yourself i should say a rugged gloves here so you're going to want to send a rugged gloves okay this is important because later on in the combo it's going to come up first thing you're going to do is you're going to activate your ancient cloak this is going to get you into your boots okay it's going to get you into your boots and then boots is going to be able to special summon itself so what i'll do first here is i am actually going to make our Chiribini. Now Chiribini is pretty much the card that you want to go to as soon as possible in this deck because this is what gets a lot of your combos and a lot of your things going, okay? So here what we're going to do is we're going to actually activate the Chiribini, sending a Seer. So at the end of the day, you're still getting into the BA engine. Remember how in the last combo we started with the BA engine and then went into the PK engine? Here you're actually starting with the PK engine essentially and then going into the BA engine. So you're gonna to want to summon the graph here, or send the graph, I should say. You're gonna send the graph, so then the graph can summon the seer, I should say. So that sorry for mixing that up. So you're sending the graph, and you're gonna be summoning the seer. Okay. So they're gonna go from there. Then it's the same thing. You're gonna go into your rusty bardiche. Okay. Your seer is gonna trigger. Seer is gonna summon Cherubini, and it's literally the same combo. Now your graveyard is set up. So first thing you can do here is you can uh, banish your silent boots. Search yourself a fog blade. Once you search yourself the fog blade, the torn scales is going to activate itself, so you can summon yourself uh, torn scales. Now here you still haven't used Rusty's effect, right? So we're going to use Rusty's effect here. We're going to dump ourselves. Uh, it doesn't really actually matter at this point what we dump. I guess you could dump a uh, stained greaves so that you can set yourself a brigadine here. Okay, that, that's the important part, right? You're, the important part is just being able to send yourself a brigadine here. What you're going to do is you're going to activate the brigadine, summon the brigadine out. Okay, so at this point you have three monsters. You do need a fourth monster though. How do you get to it? That's why the raggy gloves is important because now you're going to banish the raggy gloves and send to your graveyard a wing. You can send a fog blade too, but let's just send ourselves a wing. We're going to activate the wing effect here to summon the stained greaves back. Now, again, you don't have to send the stained greaves. You could send any other PK monster. I just like to send the stained greaves because at this point we've used silent boots effect and we used cloak effect. So why would we want to send them to the graveyard? Cause we can't use them again. Right? So now is where you make into the stained greaves. And again, same combo here. You're going to go IP. You're going to go Verte and you are going to activate the Verte and then boom, you're sending, you're still ending on four disruptions right here with two cards this time. So tour guide is obviously a little bit better as I do this. I'm going to talk to you guys. Tour guide is obviously a little bit better in the sense of when you do tour guide, it's just a one card combo. Of course, you're not going to open tour guide every single game. It would be nice if you did, but you're not going to open tour guide every single game. But this is how essentially you make your combo really consistent. So you're going to set this and you're going to proceed to end phase. Okay. So at this point you have your Bardish again for next turn for follow up. You have your DPE for a pop, you have your fog blade for a negate, and you have four disruptions. Two more with the Apollo. So then I'm gonna be honest with you, there's gonna be hands that look like this. You're not gonna have your tour guide, you're not gonna have your torn scales. Heck, you're not even gonna have any PK monsters in your hand to go to work. That's fine. You're gonna do the combo, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna end on a little bit of a different board but it's still going to be effective. It's still going to be really good. So here, this is just really bad, right? Here you're summoning, you're, you have a wielder and a Kagimucha knight, right? Which is just abysmally bad, to be honest. Is abysmally even a word? I hope it is. So here you're going to summon your Kagimucha. And again, this could be any two cards. As long as one is an extender, you can do this. Even if they don't really match up, like in this case, they don't match up, right? At all. But as long as you have one extender, you're good to go. You can play this through, okay? So this is another two card combo. You just need one extender. So here you're still going to go into Chiribini. As usual, you're going to activate the Chiribini effect, of course, sending the Graph. Graph targeting the Chiribini, or the Chiribini, I guess, targeting itself, I should say. And then the Graph summoning the Seer. Same old, same old. I know it gets kind of boring, but at least it's consistent. At least you know it's consistent. That's the important part, okay? So here you're going to go in Bardish. And unfortunately here, you're not going to be able to go into both IP and Verte because you're going to be missing an extender. So what you're going to do here is you're going to activate the Seer, of course, to summon back the Chiribini. Good to go. You're going to activate the Bardish effect here. And here you're going to want to send the cloak. Then with the cloak or with the Bardish, you're going to be able to set a card. And here you're going to want to set the fog blade. 
The reason you're not going into Brigadine at this point is because with the Bardiche, even with the Brigadine, you're not going to have an extra monster to make for the IP or the Verte. So you know how like you need four monsters essentially to make Verte and make IP. Here, you're only going to have access to three monsters, so you won't be able to make both, okay? So this is why you want to set the Fog Blade this time. So here, you're going to search the boots, and you're going to just special summon the boots here, okay? And then from here, okay, so just with the boots summon, you then from here, you're going to go into Verte, okay? We're going to go into Verte, and Verte effect is going to activate, or you could just first of all do your boots effect, and then boots is actually going to search you a Fog Blade as well. So the reason you go into this is because now that you're down on the IP and you can't make uh, the Apollo on your opponent's turn, you're going to want to have more negation somehow. So this is a way to do it essentially. So here you're going to go to Celestial and Denier or Celestial and Dasher, I should say, to go into Phoenix Enforcer. And you're just going to set your Fog Blade. So here, actually, instead of going into four disruptions, like we said before, we're actually going to be going into three. But at least you're starting with nothing. Like this is starting with a random Kage Mucha Knight and a random Psychic Wielder have nothing to do with each other as long as one is a normal summon and one is a special summon. As long as you have a normal and an extender, you can do this combo and you're ending on three disruptions still. So of course, this is not as good of a board as I showed you on the other combos, but I wanted to show you that even when you brick with this deck, because any anything that's not, as soon as you don't see your PKs in your hand, you don't see a tour guide, but as long as you can get two level three monsters on the board, you got this three disruptions right here. And again, like I showed you guys, if you had made the Brigadine here, it doesn't really do anything for you. So here you just want to get as many disruptions on the field as possible. And that's why you're going double fog blade. Okay, so the last combo I want to show you guys is what happens if you open your one card tour guide combo, but you also open a fusion destiny. Now, the reason I want to show you guys this is because I already showed you at the beginning that the tour guide on its own is four disruptions on its own, right? It's a one card combo. But what happens when you open the fusion destiny? Because sometimes you're going to see hands like this, right? And sometimes you have to keep in mind that you're not playing with one card or two cards in hand playing with a full five and sometimes those other three cards or four cards in your hand are going to help you play through hand traps and they help you extend even more so as you guys saw in the first combo you guys make the verte well here you don't need to make the verte because you already have the fusion destiny so i'm going to go through this combo real quick i, I don't have to explain it all to you guys again i don't want to bore you guys i don't want to make this video super super long but i'm going to go through the combo and then i'll get back to you guys when we get to the point where it switches up a few moments later Okay, so at this point in the combo, this is where things start to change up a little bit. Now you open your Fusion Destiny, so you don't need to go IP and then use the gloves to send a trap and then summon back your thing and then go into your Verte there. You could do it a little bit differently now. So what you do now in this case is, let's just say you activate your gloves here to send a trap. doesn't really matter what you send at this point. You can send a Fog Blade, you can send a Wings. Let's just send a Wings just for sake. And then here what you can actually do, because you have a Link to a 1 and a 1 here, you can actually make an Apollo right away. You don't need to make your IP anymore. So you can make an Apollo. And the nice thing here is Apollo is going to have an extra negate. So here you can use the Phantom Knight's wing to summon back the Silent Boots. You don't really need to do that. The reason I did it this way was just to set you up for next turn. But here all you actually really need to do is uh, send or banish your boots, I should say, to search a Fog Blade. And then boom, you have Fusion Destiny live. This is how you're passing your turn. This is how you're ending your turn. You can go into Phoenix Enforcer here, send these two, boom, okay? So now, instead of ending on the disruption with the IP and the Verte, what you're ending on is you're ending on the DPE pop, you're ending on three Apollo negates instead of two, and then you're ending on the Fog Blade. So actually, instead of ending on four disruptions, you're ending on five just by opening that extra extender in Fusion Destiny. So now, instead of having to go to Verte and then losing out on one disruption, you're literally ending on one extra disruption with the Apollo. So it's pretty much the same combo. I just wanted to show you guys what you guys can do when you open the Fusion Destiny and you don't need to necessarily go into the Verte. So that is it for today's combo video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now those were three, I think, or four combos I showed off, one and two card combos. But if you guys have any other combos, let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, at the end of the day, when you guys share your thoughts, share your opinions, and share your knowledge, then that's how we can get better at the game together as a community. And that's really all that we want at the end of the day. When we all get better at the game, that's what keeps the game fun and keeps the game going. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, Spanko, sign it. Peace.